Ever since Apple announced it was moving to Apple Silicon, the internet has been nonstop buzzing with excitement. The computing industry was rocked with the announcement of the M1 chip, and the M1's performance to efficiency ratio was and is unmatched. Now things have gotten even better with the recent release of the new MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. But with all the hype of these new chips, I think people overlooked a few game-changing features that these new MacBooks provide. And one of these features is the new Liquid Retina XDR display. And I think it's going to change the HDR landscape forever. So let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, my name is Glenn, and if you're new here, I would ask you please consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as that bell for future notifications. The new 2021 MacBook Pro with its Liquid Retina display is one of the best dynamic range displays ever in a laptop. With the 14 inch offering a resolution of 3024 by 1964, and the 16 inch offering a resolution of 3456 by 2234, both with 224 pixels per inch. As impressive as that sounds, what's most impressive is the 10,000 mini LEDs giving the display a sustained 1,000 nits of brightness and a peak of 1,600 nits, all while maintaining a P3 color accuracy and a million to one contrast ratio. And both with ProMotion technology with refresh rates of up to 120 hertz. Now, I know that we've all heard those specs before, but what does that information really mean? Well, I'll tell you what that means for me. Most content, including my own, has been in SDR, or standard dynamic range, since the beginning of film, and is based off a 100 nit brightness range. That's right, 100 nits of brightness. And now you can see why those MacBook specs of 1000 nits and 1600 nits peak is so impressive. You see, cameras and even prosumer cameras have been able to record HDR content for a long time. But the problem has been that consumer televisions and monitors haven't kept up and have only recently become more popular and affordable for the average person. In the past, and I'm talking like this year in the past, to get a good color accurate HDR monitor for color grading and editing HDR content has been extremely expensive with a quality HDR monitor costing anywhere from $1,000 to $30,000, and even Apple's own Pro Display XDR costing nearly $6,000. That put HDR monitors way out of reach for most creatives like me. Even though I love the look of HDR content and would totally like to use the full potential of my camera, it just hasn't been in the cards. But now things are gonna change with these new MacBooks. With the majority of online content being viewed on smartphones and tablets these days, many of these devices are capable of displaying HDR content. But again, most content is produced in SDR, standard dynamic range. Now with this new MacBook Pro display and possibly a new display coming to a future iMac, many creatives like me are gonna be able to have the ability to grade and produce HDR content for those viewers. With all the hype around these new MacBooks, it's only a matter of time before creatives realize this and begin to experiment and saturate the market with HDR content. In addition, this causes other manufacturers to follow Apple's lead to stay competitive and in turn brings prices within reach of more people. So what does this mean for non-creatives? Well, it simply means for you that the viewing experience is gonna change and it's gonna get much better. I mean, just picture the way TV was in the 90s where we used to have square boxes. Now we have wide 16 by nine aspect ratios and much better color quality. For creatives like me, it means a whole new level of creativity has just opened up. These new MacBook Pros are a game changer and I'm super excited to be able to experiment with HDR content. But before we end this video, I do wanna say these MacBook Pros are definitely not for every I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to sell the MacBook Pro to, to anybody. Creatives who need these things know that they need them. For me, it's simply a tool. And it is a very expensive tool that is not a wise decision for a lot of people to purchase. For me, I will make my money back from this from the work that I can produce. But I know it's easy to get caught up in the hype 
and the excitement of new technology like this and makes a lot of people want it. But please don't go and purchase something like this just based off of how I make it look or how other creatives make it look. There are plenty of other amazing computers like out there. Even the M1 MacBook Air is more than efficient for a lot of people. But that's it for today's video. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And until the next time, I'll see you guys around. Thanks for stopping by.